So why does Game of Thrones mix together characters with crazy-ass fantasy names and characters with the names of ordinary dudes? It's weird, they're like, I'm Stannis Baratheon, prophet of the fire god, and lord of Dragonstone, and this is Ned. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ned from Yonkers over there. <laughs> this season they actually have a character named Uncle Kevin. Uncle Kevin is not the lord of Casterly Rock. Uncle Kevin sells weed from a houseboat. <laughs> Uncle Kevin has one of those big pump things of lotion in the living room. You're like, that. put that away when I visit. That's... <laughs> So last year I divorced my wife because, lots of reasons, but mostly because she dumped me. That was like the main thing. <laughs> but I was like, it's over after that. <laughs> but it's weird, because I was married all through my 20s, so I don't know how to be single. I'm missing skills. You know what it's like? You ever hear about an animal in captivity, maybe a bear? And for some reason, they release the bear, so they kick it out in the woods and go, you're free, and the bear's like, when does the guy with the salmon bucket come by? Where's the tire swing? And he's dead like an hour later. He's killed and eaten by a frog. That's me. I don't know stuff. I didn't know people would post old photos on their OkCupid profile, but they do. I'm looking at a, at a girl like, she seems lovely, and she's holding a Sony Walkman. That's old. That's... <laughs> Standing next to Joan Benet Ramsey, I don't think that's current. <laughs> People get tricky, they post group photos. That's what the Riddler would do. Like, which one is me? Can it guess, bat fool? <laughs> Here's what I learned about group photos. If you don't know which person it is, it's the one you're hoping it's not. <laughs> and I hate the way every online dating site says, we're gonna find your exact match. Yeah, nobody wants that. You don't want your match. You want someone better than you you can trick into slumming it. That's the goal. <laughs> That's what you want. Online dating is still better than bars. Every bar... <sighs> Alright, it's a hookup zone, but you're drunk. It's dark, it's loud, you can't see or hear anyone. It's basically a glory hole with a cover charge. That's a bar. <laughs> you could go to a cocktail bar where they have drinks that sound really good, but the names are so effeminate, I don't want to order. Don't make me go to a bar and be like, excuse me, can I get a lavender vulva, please? <laughs> How about a lactating wood nymph? Can you make me that? <laughs> what do you have with honeysuckle? Tinkerbell's pap smear? What on the rocks? <laughs> I'm not sophisticated enough for a wine bar. They give me that list, like, these are French, these are Italian. I'm like, you might as well have said Narnia and Mordor. I got no idea. <laughs> what do you have that pairs well with the entire jar of peanut butter I ate an hour ago? <laughs> I'm a little white trashy. It all tastes like grape tang mixed with Everclear to me. Just bring me whatever. Honestly, dating in New York, I, I get envious of gay dudes. A gay dude in New York can run through the equivalent of a straight guy's entire sexual bucket list like before brunch, if he wants. And we have this really unfair stereotype where we say, oh, gay men are oversexed, degenerate perverts. So like, yeah, they totally are, but they're just doing what straight guys would do if you'd let us. <laughs> They're living the dream. If you could get a woman to go to a bathhouse, there would be straight bathhouses. I almost wonder if bathhouses started as a straight thing, but no women showed up, and they're like, well, we already paid for the space. Uh... 
<laughs> yeah, a lot of women said yes to that Facebook invite, but where are they, you know? Uh, my face is red, but my balls are blue. So what do you say? <laughs> Let's make lemonade here, fellas. <laughs> We have made we have made so much progress on gay rights. It's amazing, but it, everything changed so fast. I almost feel bad for homophobes. Almost, because like it changed so quickly. It'd be like if you woke up tomorrow and jokes about Nickelback were suddenly not okay, <laughs> and you're still like Nickelback, and your friends like, whoa, hey, uh, can I talk to you for a second? Um, uh, yeah, so you know, my cousin is in Nickelback. And we don't call them Nickelback, we call them Diet Green Day, okay? That's the preferred term. Glad to be back in New York. I just, uh, just, woo! <laughs> For the city we're all in. What are the odds? What are the odds that I mention New York here in New York? It's cool to be back though. I just saw my parents. I was reminded that my parents are the greatest taboo duo. The game. Greatest taboo duo to ever live. Any game where you guess words, my parents are unbeatable because they've been married 40 years. So at this point, every word in English is a shared memory of a fight that they had. So they don't need the words on the card. My dad just gives clues like, ugh. Your goddamn cousin. Mom's like, Thanksgiving, yes, one! <laughs> Duh, we were in Chicago. You should have got the insurance. Just say the word, Ellen. Fender Bender, yes, two! <laughs> Jesus, Mary, and jo Cher, yes, three! <laughs> Unbeatable. I want to be in a couple of those awesome games. My, I can say this now that I'm divorced. My ex-wife sucked at Pictionary. She sucked. And I'm glad I'm out, because that was my Pictionary partner for life. <laughs> She was awful. And as soon as I would start drawing anything, she would just yell words at me. As soon as I make a shape, she's like, circle, ball, sphere. I'm like, it's not circle. It's never circle. <laughs> There's more drawing to come. And there's no card in the box that says circle. It'd be an easy fucking game, wouldn't it? If it circle? We could be playing Pictionary for babies with head injuries. The answer would not ever be circle. <laughs> then it was her turn to draw. My wife would do that thing where she would draw for five seconds and spend the rest of the time pointing to the thing that she drew. <laughs> then sometimes she would circle it and then point to it some more. Sometimes she'd draw helpful arrows pointing to the thing. That's fucking condescending, right? As if I'm looking around like, I don't even know where to start! Wait, wait. I'm not in the kitchen! Help me, honey! But oh, the pad, yes, of course, I look at the pad, honey. The pad where you've drawn a word with nipples. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you know what might help, honey, be if you scratch that out and then draw the exact same fucking thing right next to the first thing, honey. Why don't you do that, then we can whisper fight till everyone's nice and uncomfortable. <laughs> then have a nice quiet drive home, what do you say? <laughs> Good to see my parents again. My, my parents are good people. My dad is a good guy, but cheap with the vengeance. He remembers every company that has ever screwed him in his entire life. He carries around these miniature jihads against the Verizon and Comfort Inn. <laughs> And it's weird, because in other ways, he's very tolerant. Like, if I had come home when I was younger and said, Dad, I'm gay, and I'm going to marry a black man, he would have said, Son, I love you, I support you, 
I just want you to be happy. But if I had added, and he works for Alamo Rental Car, he'd be like, son of a bitch! How can you do that to this family? I will not have that person in my house. A Ford Focus is not a midsize. He, he is a straight up crazy person. My dad complained one time that the service was bad on Southwest Airlines. I'm like, alright dad, maybe the service was bad. On the other hand, they're flying you round trip Atlanta to New York for $12. When I'm flying for $12, I lower my expectations a bit. Maybe the pilot's a little drunk. Fuck it, it's $12. <laughs> Maybe the flight attendant calls me the N-word. That's weird, but I roll with it. It's $12. For $12, we could crash in the mountains, end up having to eat each other to survive. It's still a pretty good deal. That's not bad. I flew to Seattle one time with my dad. It wasn't until we were at the gate at LaGuardia that I realized why the tickets he bought were so cheap. Because they go to the intercom, they're like, all right, we're gonna start boarding flight 714, service to Seattle via St. Louis, Kansas City, Denver, Salt Lake, Tijuana, Portland, is it Oregon or Maine? Portland, oh, well, both, both Portland, Oregon, and Maine. This guy wanted to go, so where'd you want to go? <laughs> Boise, we'll drop you off. Boise, I don't know. <laughs> and then on to Seattle after Chicago, Boston, Baghdad, Los Angeles. <laughs> We'd like to start boarding now. Uh, there are no seat assignments on Southwest Airlines, so let the Hunger Games begin! We're going to play! Here's how we do it. When I call your zone, you rush the door like piglets to a teat. <laughs> Until we've got an atmosphere that's half Who concert and half Scottish soccer riot. <laughs> Passengers requesting a vegetarian meal should have flown JetBlue, you fancy motherfuckers. <laughs> For Jeff Power, enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks a lot. <laughs>